Today we're going to be roasting on a hot air popcorn popper. This may bring back memories for some of you, some more recent than others. Uh, some of you are watching started out on a hot air popcorn popper and now you're in a completely different place in your hobby. We're going to be talking about that today. If you're brand new to home coffee roasting and you're starting out on a hot air popper or contemplating it, we're going to do a roast together. We're going to talk about what's happening during the roast and then we're going to talk about the journey, what's next in home coffee roasting for you and for all of us who have been in this together. So stick around. All right, thanks for joining me today and welcome to the Virtual Coffee Lab. We talk about home coffee roasting here on this channel. If this is the type of content that you enjoy, I encourage you to subscribe. Let's get into the roast here. We're going to be roasting an El Salvador natural coffee on this hot air popcorn popper. We start out with green coffee that looks like this. And we end up with brown coffee that looks like this. Now, that's a really important thing that I just said, green coffee and brown coffee, because Ultimately, what a lot of people are doing when we roast on a hot air popper is we're just browning the beans. Now, you may say, well, what are you talking about browning the beans? We're roasting coffee. We are roasting coffee, but we have no control, virtually no control over this roaster and what it does. We flip a switch and it runs and the coffee turns brown. Now, we can make changes to when we decide to pull the coffee. We can also alter the roast length, how long the roast takes to finish based on how many beans we put in that roaster. That's a little trick. That's for another video. For now, we're going to get this roast started. 50 grams of green coffee and we're going to get this going right now. We're not going to use any sort of a bowl to ch collect chaff. It's going to get messy. We're roasting in my basement. There's not going to be a lot of smoke because I'm not taking this roast really dark. It's going to be a medium roast like this. And we won't see a bunch of smoke come out of the roaster. Now, one of the things we're going to do when we get started here is we're going to talk about what's happening to the beans. So I will step out of the picture. I'll let the camera up above capture what's happening to the beans and we'll end up talking together. All right, let's get going. 50 grams of coffee beans. I'm going to leave this lid off, get this cup out of the way, and we'll get started. Now, one of the first things I want to do is make sure that I've got good bean movement. Okay, so notice that the beans are swirling around. That's really important. So we've charged the roaster. We've, we've put the coffee beans into the roaster. The heat is on. That's called charging the roaster. Now the beans are swirling around. And our next event, the next goal, the next thing that we want to do is to get this coffee to go from that green color to a yellow color. And that is going to be called dry end or the drying event. Okay, you will see chaff starting to come off of the roaster and that's the nature of coffee roasting. Depending upon the type of roaster you have, it may collect the chaff and keep it from going all over the place. This is a $25 hot air popcorn popper. It does not have a chaff collector. You could put a bowl down underneath here to catch some of it, but you know it's gonna it's gonna make a mess. You may be asking why am I leaving this lid off? And the reason why I'm leaving this lid off is because I want to let a little bit of hot air out. I don't want it to get so hot in there that this roast is going to be super short. We're going to end up with about a five minute roast. Okay. If you look in there, you'll see that the coffee is starting to turn yellow. 
and uh, we're going to be at yellow in probably about another 30 seconds or so. And that is the end of the dry phase. That's the first of three phases as we roast coffee, the dry phase. As the coffee dries, it becomes lighter. And so you'll see more bean movement inside of the roaster right now. That's a good thing. You want bean movement because you want as much of an even colored roast as possible. All right, let's take a look here. Okay, coffee is definitely yellow. Now, we're not using any sort of timers. We're not keeping track of our times in each phase. But we finished yellow now, and now we're in this middle phase. We call this the browning phase, or some people call it a Maillard phase. And this is a phase where a lot of the flavor development begins, and it works through to the point where the coffee becomes brown and then it starts to get darker and then it will get to a point where there's a lot of uh, heat build up inside of the bean to the point where the bean cracks open pressure and basically the moisture is being driven to the center of the bean it, it creates high pressure inside of the bean itself and then it cracks open that's called first crack that is going to be the event we're aiming towards right now. First crack. Okay, the uh, hay smell and the bread smell are gone and we're starting to get a little bit of a sweetness going. Coffee is definitely turning brown. And the beans are really moving around. Again, that's really important. I'm using a wooden spoon, it doesn't, it won't burn unless you like leave it in there. It gets really hot inside that roaster. We're going to be listening for first crack. Now, first crack isn't just one crack or two cracks. We want to listen for a succession of cracks. Right, I'm smelling more sweetness. I'm looking inside at the color. I'm smelling. I'm using my senses to kind of get a feel of where my roast is at in this total roast process. We're getting close to first crack. You can see this pile of chaff that builds up around the roaster. It's good to use a roast, uh, like a hot air popper, underneath a hood fan. All right, so we got a crack, crack, crack. First crack has begun. So now, our next goal is going to be to decide when we want to end the roast. So this part of the roasting phase is the third phase and it's called the development phase. The coffee is cracking. Uh, all of the different beans that are in there are going to crack. That is a sign that they have um, reached the point where you can drink the coffee and it won't be underdeveloped. It'll just be a light roast. And we're going to let this get a little darker. A lot of people that roast on a hot air popper, they'll have a system where they'll say, I'm going to roast the coffee for one minute after first crack or two minutes after first crack. And those are all good uh, ways to use the hot air popper and determine when you want to pull your roast. We really aren't able to take the temperature of this and know what the temperature of the beans are, but that would be really helpful. That would help us know when to take the coffee out. Bean color is also really important. bean color is going to help you determine how dark you want it and when you want to end the roast. And this is just about cracked all the coffee. So this is going to give me a medium roast right about now. So I'm going to end the roast. And I'm going to end up, there's still a few stragglers that are cracking. And I'm going to end up dropping the beans here into this little cooling tray. 
and we're going to take a look at these beans. It's a fairly consistent roast. You're going to see a few light beans in here, but generally speaking, this is a, a fairly even roast. There's, there's some that are light, like I said. Now, this is all the chaff. And this is really easy to clean up. You end up just taking this and then grabbing it and catching a pile of it and dumping it in the garbage. It's good to be able to have an organized space for you to be able to roast coffee. Okay, so let's talk about what happened and then we're gonna talk about some of your options or some of the next steps of what you're gonna do next. You can definitely try different roasting profiles with a hot air popcorn popper. The same coffee roasted a little different ways is gonna make the coffee taste different. So the longer you leave the roast going, the darker it's gonna get, the different it's gonna taste. Really, the sky's the limit when it comes to home coffee roasting. It's, it's a wonderful hobby because we get to get purchase coffees from all over the world, specialty coffees, really good quality coffee, and we get to roast it and taste the difference between the different origins, you know, where they're from. That's really cool. That's one of the things I really enjoy about this hobby. So let's talk about taste for a second. You're a new home coffee roaster, maybe you've been roasting coffee for a while, and your coffee just doesn't seem to be exciting. It doesn't really seem to be like really special. It tastes pretty good. Um, it tastes definitely better than the stuff you'd buy in the store, but you're really not totally satisfied with what's going on. One of the things that's really going to make a difference is learning how the temperature of the coffee over time, the temperature of it during the roasting process over time affects the taste. But where you're going to find an amazing cup of coffee is a what I'll call a sweet spot. It's the, the golden cup. It's the, it's the cup that tastes better than anything you've roasted before and you wish you remember how you did it. <laughs> and that's part of the joy of roasting coffee and figuring it all out is it, it is a journey. Uh, it, it takes time to understand what's happening. So the best thing you can do is to make notes, to take notes while you roast coffee, even on a hot air popcorn popper. I would start out simply by training yourself to identify when each of the coffee events takes place and when each of the phases uh, can be identified. So the dry phase from the beginning of the roast until the coffee turns yellow, all yellow. That is the end of, of dry. Practice that. Same thing with first crack. Practice listening to when the coffee starts to crack. When you hear a succession of cracks, that's the first crack event. Then once you're able to identify the events, start to write down the times that each event takes place. So you charge the roaster, you put the coffee in the roaster. When do you decide the coffee's turned yellow? Write down yellow and write down the time into the roast. So you're gonna time the roast from the beginning. And if it's three and a half or four minutes uh, or two and a half or three minutes on the hot air popcorn popper, you'll write that time down. When the coffee gets to first crack, you'll write that time down and then when you drop the coffee, when you turn off the roaster and pour the coffee out and start to cool it, and you'll want to get it cool, um, as soon as you drop the coffee out of the roaster, that is a drop. That is the end of the roast. That's your total roast time. Write that number, that time down as well. Now, I have a series of coffee roasting videos that talks about this, and it talks about what you do with these different event times because ultimately the goal is to control your roaster and manipulate, alter the amount of time the coffee is roasting in each of these phases so you can roast some awesome coffee. Can you do that on a hot air popcorn popper? Probably not. You'll enjoy using the popper, the hot air popper. You'll enjoy tasting that coffee and you'll have fond memories of the hot air popcorn popper, but at some point you'll be ready to move on. And so I want to spend just a minute to talk to you about a few of the roasters that are here so that you can kind of see some of the next steps in your coffee roasting journey. But before I do that, I want to invite you to subscribe and also hit the like button if you've enjoyed this content. That really helps my channel out. I put out new content regularly. I've got a lot of videos 
about coffee roasting. I have an essentials playlist that is really important that talks about the coffee roasting theory. It's not really too super technical, not too super deep, but it gives you an idea of some of the things to start to pay attention to. Whether you watch my videos or someone else's videos, you'll have enough sense, enough understanding to be able to see if somebody is just browning beans or if they're paying attention to the roast and they're trying to control their roast. All right, speaking of controlling your roast, let's talk about that for a second. I've got several coffee roasters that I really enjoy. All of these I own and I use personally. So the Hot Air Popcorn Popper is one. This is a great roaster. This is called the Hive Roaster. This is a really unique roaster because uh, this can give you some of the best coffee you'll ever roast on this simple roasting machine, this roasting device here. It's really cool the way that Matthew, the owner of Hive Coffee Roasters, has designed this, this pan. It has these notches, these bumps, so the coffee is tumbling inside of here as you're moving this around. That gives you a really even roast. You'll see that sometimes you'll roast coffee and it's not even. There's light coffee and dark coffee mixed in there. The hive gives you an even roast. The way that this is designed, it gets hot in here, but hot air will come through this screen and it will circulate in this dome and it'll incinerate the chaff and the smoke. So there's very little smoke unless you start to roast dark, then you'll start to get smoke on any kind of roaster that you use. Um, so this is a great roaster and you can even upgrade. So this, this I'll put the, uh, the price for this up on the screen right now. This is one of the least expensive, best options for learning how to roast coffee. And I mean learning how to roast coffee and roasting some great coffee on the Hive Roaster. Learning how to roast great coffee on this roaster is simple because it's total hands-on and you can manipulate the times and the temperatures of this roaster to get some great coffee in each of these phases. You can actually upgrade this roaster to display temperatures, and I have that feature right here. This actually has a bean probe in it. It um, replaces this simple dome. And you have a temperature display that's powered by a USB that you can just plug right into the wall. It's pretty cool. But I have a series of roasts. I have uh, a playlist for the Hive. One of the most important videos that I could ask you to watch that's with the Hive is called Taking Control of Your Roast. And you'll see me create a roasting profile. And you'll see me follow that profile to a T with this roaster. Pretty amazing stuff. So the Hive Coffee Roaster, I'll have a link in the description for you check it out. Also, the, um, the popper. This is a step up from a hot air popper. You're going to spend under $100 for that. I'll put the price up on the screen for the popper. And this, you can control the airflow. Like this one, you couldn't control anything, air or temperature. This, you can control both air and temperature. It's got a timer on it, countdown timer. It's got a chaff collector, so it collects most of the chaff, doesn't go all over the place. Pretty sweet roaster. This is a great option for you if you want to go the next step up without spending a lot of, lot of money on a roaster. All right, if you really enjoy hot air roasting and you want to go to the next level after that, you would consider something like the Fresh Roast. This is a modified Fresh Roast. It's something that I've modified that has an extension tube on it. By the way, the Hive, I can roast 170 grams of coffee on the Hive. I can roast 50 grams of coffee on the hot air popper. I can roast about 80 grams of coffee, uh, maybe 100 grams of coffee, maybe even 120 grams of coffee on this hot air popper by Sweet Maria's. 140 grams of coffee I can roast on this SR540. There's a Big Brother version of this roaster that uh, can roast even more coffee than that. These are all great roasters. They all do a really wonderful job. And then here is the Beemore. This is a roaster that I've had for over 12 years. I love this roaster. I've gotten some amazing roasts out of it. There are many professional um, coffee roasters that learned how to roast coffee on the Beemore. 
It has its own chaff collector tray. It's a drum roaster. You can control temperature. You can control the drum speed. And you can control, there is a fan um, that, that turns on for air circulation. Um, but the fan is not anything like you would use on, um, on a full-blown drum roaster. This is what I roast on uh, every week. This is a 500 gram Mill City drum roaster. It is a professional sample roaster and I love this machine. It's awesome. It's fully manual, manual control over gas, airflow, drum speed, and uh, all of the chaff is collected in a chaff collector in the back. All the exhaust and smoke is vented out of my basement through that tube right there. And this is a great roaster. So this is the journey that you may find yourself on as you begin to roast coffee at home. There's a lot of fun. It's a great community. One of the things you'll notice and I would encourage you to do is when you watch some of my videos, read the comments and you'll see people that want to learn how to roast or are sharing some advice from some things that they've learned. So I would encourage you to check out the comments in each of the videos. You can learn a lot from that. They'll be really helpful. I would like to hear your thoughts on what you think about this video, what you've learned, what you've been surprised by, maybe something you didn't know, uh, maybe something that given you a little clarity and understanding of the coffee roasting process. Share what you've learned and share your thoughts on this video. I would really appreciate it. You can do that down in the comments area. Okay, so yes, check out my playlist, check out some of the videos I've done, and I will have some links in the descriptions. I do have an Amazon store that you can check out all kinds of different coffee roasters that are sold on Amazon. Um, I get a commission if you buy something from my list, but just go there and just to look. I'm not asking you to buy anything. Just go there and look. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. You'll see all different types of coffee roasters that you can learn about and kind of start to get an idea of where this hobby goes for you. And for you guys that are seasoned that I have roasted for a long time, um, think back to when you first started roasting and to what you're doing now. I'd love to hear some of your coffee roasting journey. That would be really cool. Share those in the comments as well. Appreciate you guys joining me today. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time here at the Virtual Coffee Lab. I hope you have a great week roasting. We'll see you next time.